For a person to live well, it is not enough to be smart and kind. There are situations in which a person does not need it, this opinion was once expressed by the famous brain researcher, academician Natalia Bektareva. A world-renowned neurophysiologist, academician Natalia Bektareva always believed that the human brain is a living being inside our body. She always wanted to look beyond the boundaries, to visit places where no one had ever been before, to understand what makes a human being a human being. What these situations are, and how Natalia explained her words. Why Ivanushka the fool beats even the smartest. Smart and stupid people are discordant because the former think, and the latter do not want to think, but this is their advantage, said Natalia Bektareva. The academician considered stupid people not so stupid. While an intelligent person experiences emotional and intellectual tension, trying to solve some problem, at the same time Ivanushka the fool does not experience all this. As a result, an intelligent person sometimes spends a huge amount of energy, but cannot always come to an unambiguous solution. It turns out that the resource is spent, but the problem is not solved. And the mentioned fairy tale character thinks only about what to eat and where to sleep. He does not spend so much energy on solving his own problems, and he does not care about the problems of other people. In this sense, Ivanushka acts as an intelligent person, says Natalia Bektareva. Because many of the problems that make us worry are nothing. Some problems are solved without our participation. And the solution of some of them does not depend on us at all. But a smart person can't help thinking about it and thus destroys his psyche, which is one of the main causes of aging, Natalia Petrovna argued. Ivanushka acts smarter without even realizing it. He does not exhaust his psyche with stress and nervous tension. But one should not conclude after all this that thinking is harmful. A person should think, says Natalia Petrovna, but sometimes you need to let yourself be Ivanushka and not think about unnecessary things. That's what self-care is all about. When kindness is at the expense of self. Natalia Petrovna considered kindness and honesty to be the creative light of the soul. But these qualities can harm a person if he deals with egoists. Why do kind and honest people sometimes live worse than their antipodes? Natalia Bektareva had a simple explanation, because good people are often used for selfish purposes. At the same time, a good person rarely turns to someone else for help. Natalia Petrovna belonged to those people who believe that real kindness is always selfless. However, you need to understand for whom you are doing good deeds. If you constantly help someone and get nothing from this person, you are simply used by egoists, but you do it of your own free will, says Natalia Bektareva. And the more a good person agrees to this exploitation, the more such exploiters become. Why you should not help those who did not ask you for it. When a good person sees the hardships of another, he reaches out his helping hand. Sometimes it seems that our efforts will help a person out of a hole. But this is self-deception thought Natalia Bektareva. No one can help a person in trouble if he or she does not want to correct the situation. There are many stories when people devoted their lives to helping someone to change. But it is an empty effort if the other party does not want to do anything to change the situation. In that case, our efforts will only lead to our frustration. By trying to help someone who does not want or ask for it, we are wasting our energy. This also applies to situations when a person suffers from some kind of addiction, says Natalia Petrovna. If everything in a person's life is satisfactory, then our help in this case will not do him any good. Moreover, Bektareva argued that by helping a person who does not appreciate it, we betray ourselves. If we help someone and see the result, we realize that everything was not in vain. But when we do not see the result, we feel tired and apathetic. 
And it turns out that we did not help our neighbor, but harmed ourselves. In such situations, it is necessary to understand what you spend your energy on, says Natalia Bektoreva. The director of the orphanage, Arkady Kellner, whom we loved and feared, taught us three basic principles of life. These principles help to get through any difficulties. And they helped us, the children of the twenties and thirties, to survive and withstand difficult periods of life, in which we not only lost something, but also gained something. Many of us confirmed this by our own example, was how academician Natalia Bektoreva began her story about an important stage of her life. She devoted much of her work to the study of the function of the subcortex of the human brain, and was also actively interested in the issues of human genius and superpowers, such as clairvoyance. Bektoreva did not deny unexplained by science phenomena related to the human brain, in particular, she believed that the body without the soul does not live and that biological death does not necessarily lead to the death of the soul. Natalia Petrovna left behind many interesting reflections on life and useful admonitions. Among them is a story about three main principles that always helped Natalia Petrovna to withstand difficult life situations, to survive the betrayal of her closest friends, criticism, persecution in the institute, tragic events in her personal life, and to cope with their consequences. Let us elaborate on each of the principles. Principle 1. Reasonable Pride Natalia Bektoreva considered reasonable pride, if it does not turn into arrogance, a great strength. The academician argued that it is reasonable pride, which is a form of dignity, that helps not only not to tremble before execution, to fulfill one's duty, even when it is not easy, but also in other life situations. Natalia Bektoreva explained what reasonable pride is, whether it is nurtured or whether it is an innate quality, using a concrete example. Natalia Bektoreva remembered this lesson for the rest of her life. Once we, the children from the orphanage, were given identical orange dresses. These clothes were intended for work in the workshops. But everyone who received these dresses decided to wear them to school, including me. Since that day this color has caused me rather unpleasant feelings, this is how Natalia Petrovna recalled about the lesson, which brought up reasonable pride in her. When Arkady Kellner saw his students in identical dresses, he was furious. And most of all got the future academician. What was the fault of Natalia Petrovna and her peers? The director reprimanded them for the fact that they, by their stupidity, dressed in identical dresses, began to look like orphans from the orphanage, which indecent people cause pity. Why didn't the student who was considered the best in the school realize that she had voluntarily labeled herself an orphanage orphan? Arkady Kellner resented Natalia Bektoreva. The director of the orphanage said that he was trying to do everything possible so that no one could hang such a label on his girls. The orphanage boys sewed them patent shoes. They were so beautiful that, according to Natalia Petrovna, even the children at home looked at them. Besides, none of the orphanage girls had the same dress, not counting those orange ones, which were intended for school. A moralist would say, what's the matter with clothes? You meet people by their clothes. The best athletes, the best students, the best actors, the best, the best, the best, the best. But the best are the pride of the units. The school principal thought of all of us, and that's why I gave such a worldly example. Starting with clothes, appearance, always trim and neat, that's how Arkady Kellner brought up our self-esteem in us. Principle 2, Fostering Resilience Natalia Bektoreva found herself in an orphanage in 1937. Even then she realized that the daughter of enemies of the people would inevitably end up in a brick factory after graduation unless she studied hard and became the best student. Fortunately, Natalia's studies were easy, but the road from the orphanage to school was not always easy, 
especially in the blockade snowy winter. In any weather, in any circumstances Bektareva overcame this way every day. Although the road was not the only educator of fortitude. Natalia Petrovna recalled that she was a home child, and adaptation to the orphanage life was not easy for her. The other girls in the orphanage, who disliked Bektareva, did not help her either. Domestic Natasha got from them and physically. Once Arkady Kellner called Bektareva to himself and said that he would punish the instigators if she named them. The pupil refused to reveal her offenders, for which she sat the rest of the day without lunch and dinner. I sat on his leather sofa for hours without lunch and dinner. At least he didn't come around much. And the morning at the ruler A, I, told about my forced and ineffective starvation. In what colors? Of course, I didn't deserve it, and he obviously wasn't talking for me. But he knew that more powerful than book techniques on children is the effect of what is seen, heard, what is near. Soon after that we began to often and independently conduct experiments on resistance, and I still have a memory of it. The round spot on the back of my left hand is still visible to this day. I endured all of them, but it is good that the patient ones were not too many, probably thanks to this the hand works, neither nerves nor tendons are damaged. Principle 3 Emotional Balance This principle speaks of the importance and ability to receive positive emotions, which are known to be enemies to negative ones. Arkady Kellner taught this to his students as well. So, after lessons, Natalia Bektareva, together with her peers, was engaged in theater rehearsals. The performances included everything, words, dances, music and songs. From play to play, the actors and the audience changed places. Therefore, every student was up on the stage. Such a theater life, according to Natalia Petrovna, gave a lot of positive emotions. In the evenings, when the performances were not in full swing, the pupils of the orphanage were engaged in sports, skating, swimming, rowing. In such simple and wonderful ways the director of the orphanage nurtured and strengthened the children's mental balance, which also helped them to withstand difficult times. We must make sure that difficulties, if they cannot be avoided, harden. Director of the orphanage Arkady Isovic Kellner, I, who died in the first days of the war, possessed perfectly the secret of education of fortitude and firmness. A stately, intelligent man, with a beautiful wife, he loved us, and we loved him and were afraid of him. But not as we feared a cold performer. For we loved him for his love, for his intelligent concern for underprivileged children, and we feared the exactingness that love dictated. Many of us, even after his death, confirmed indeed that it is possible to go through hardships, not only losing something in them, but gaining something more valuable and important.